life can bring us storms. Those moments where we wander, wonder, doubt. The journey doesn't stop, but the progress does. It can be lonely, painful. Sometimes we try to stare it down, as if we could somehow will it to go away. Or we think we can go toe to toe and come out the other side, unscathed. We often forget just how small we are. The truth is, storms are inevitable. But when they appear, we have a protector. A savior who knows a thing or two about calming storms. A God who is a stronghold in times of trouble. In our weakness, He is strong. In our fear, He is courage. In our desperation, He is peace. Yes, storms are inevitable. But our God is invincible. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's so wonderful to look out across the sanctuary and see all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I see some families here, and I think that's really exciting. I see some new faces, and that's always exciting for us as a small church to welcome new people amongst our midst, to worship our Creator, to learn about God from our wonderful pastor, and to join in worship with our great worship team. So please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Thank you for this opportunity to gather with my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, to worship you, to learn more about you, and then come refreshed with your Holy Spirit to go out into the world and to serve you. And we pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Would you please stand up and let's praise the Lord. This is a mighty fortress is our God, hymn number 110.
forgiveness forever. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Good morning. It's been a week. But God is good, amen? All the time. Let's just pray again. God, we thank you so much for who you are and what you've done for us. God, we thank you that we can rely on your word, that when everything is shaken, you are not. We thank you for your love for us, God. We thank you for your freedom. And we give you this time of worship. In Jesus' name, amen.
it's so good. We are free. I am so thankful for his mercy because Lord knows I need it. His mercy and his grace. But I'm glad that I don't have to stay where I was. And he doesn't want me to stay where I was. Because he has better plans for me. And that's true for all of us. He loves us so, so much. God, we thank you that you are here with us. We thank you for your presence, God. We thank you that you're in control of every situation. When things are out of control around us, when we're out of control, God, you are steadfast. We don't have to worry about whether you're going to be there or not. You are constant.
are the miracle worker, God. That when we get that, those results, that news, God, that we don't have to focus on that. We focus on who you are, what you are going to do, God. We thank you for your power. There is power in your name, God. We thank you that we can speak your name over every situation, and it has to go. It has to go. There is no place with you there. We thank you for your name. That is who you are. Let's sing that again. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. But that steadfast, immovable, don't be shaken. And I'm guilty of that. But as we sing this, just speak it over your family. Speak it over the issues in your life. Let's sing it together.
singing the part about fear touched my soul and Cindy just pointed to that part too so if any of you are struggling I know this is out of your comfort zone but God calls us to be uncomfortable so if you are struggling with fear which I absolutely do um, if you want to come down and I'm going to ask Cindy to pray for people who come down. If you need prayer or want prayer, fear doesn't belong in our hearts. And I am so guilty of that. I am so, so guilty of that. But we don't have to be afraid with God on our side. So we're going to just sing that again. If you need prayer, please come down. Cindy will pray for you. Circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name. Restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come alive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, come believe it. Come receive it. The power. i 
we would not be focused on that but we would be focused on what we're doing now God what you want us to do right now with the lives that you have given us pray that you would be glorified in everything that we do and say and think God it is all about you we thank you for this time of worship God we give it to you in Jesus name The scripture reading today is from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that is the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea in the west, shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This, this, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way, for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know how sometimes... um, you just want to stay at, at a particular place and not move on. That's where I am right now. I, I, I want to go back to worship. <laughs> I don't want to move on. Uh, but we, we need to move on because we need to unpack some of this. Uh, what Christina was saying is very true. Many of us are plagued by fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of the known, fear of what's coming, fear of what may come. All of these fears kind of uh, envelop us and, and take, uh, take us off track. Fear is a tool of the enemy, and the devil just loves to have us be fearful. If you read the Screwtape Letters from C.S. Lewis, you know that fear is one of the tools 
in the tool chest of the demons to get us off track and to make us fall by the wayside. But God says to us, fear not. Whenever an angel appears in the Bible, what's the first words out of his mouth? Fear not, or do not fear. That's right. And uh, that is such a prevailing theme in Scripture that it's, it's uh, serendipitous or perhaps uh, God, uh, God planned <laughs> that we come to our series uh, of, called A Fresh Start, and today we're talking about courage. Courage. We're now in week four of this series called Fresh Start. As we begin this new year, we're looking at getting a fresh start in our lives. And the one essential thing we have to have for a fresh start in this new year is what? <laughs> the first one, follow Jesus. Yes, good to have you all here today. Hi, I'm Pastor Glenn Hayworth. Let me introduce this series to you. It's called Fresh Start. Yes, the first and most essential thing to have a fresh start is that we have to recommit ourselves or to commit ourselves for the first time to follow Jesus. If we do not choose to follow Jesus, our attempts at a fresh start will end up like all the other attempts at a fresh start that we've made throughout our lives, where we're on fire for a while, but then the fresh start starts to wear off. We cannot make a clean, fresh start apart from deciding, again, to follow Jesus. And our, our choice to follow Jesus will lead to other fresh starts in our life. We need to have a fresh start in our worship. We have to move from worship as a time and place to a life marked by worship all the time. A life of worshiping God for who he is all the time. We also need a fresh start with the Word of God. We have to throw ourselves into the Word of God, the Bible. We have to move past ink and paper to discover the very words of God to us. Those were our topics over the past three weeks, and today we're going to try to tackle another place where we need a fresh start. We're going to find that topic in Joshua. So open your Bibles to the Old Testament book of Joshua. Turn to chapter 1. I'm going to start at the very beginning, Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses, from the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Let's unpack that a bit. God is speaking to Joshua. The Israelites, you know, have escaped from the Egyptians, and God has delivered them from slavery, and they have wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. All of the original bunch has died except for Joshua and Caleb. Even Moses had died. Moses had been the leader of the Israelites for 40 years, and he had a lot of opposition over those years. But he was the leader. He was the one that God spoke to. He was the one who received the directions from the Lord. And he's the one who helped all the others settle their differences. Moses was the man, and now Moses was dead. Who was going to have to fill the shoes of Moses? The Lord speaks to Joshua, and he tells Joshua, The time has come for you to lead these people. So Joshua gets to fill Moses' big shoes, and the Lord tells Joshua that he will be with him just like he was with Moses. He promises Joshua the same promises as he'd promised Moses. And he tells Joshua that he will give him whatever land his foot touches. God tells Joshua no one will be able to stand against him. The Lord tells Joshua, 
He will never fail him or abandon him. How do you think Moses felt about this? Do you think that he had doubts about filling the shoes of Moses? Do you think that he may have thought to himself, there's no way, I can't do this. Moses was strong. I don't know if I've got what it takes. Do you think maybe Joshua was a little bit scared about his ability to do this? It's possible, because see what the Lord tells Joshua next, starting at verse 6. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous. He shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. There's a couple of words that stick out in what the Lord tells Joshua here. Did you catch them? combination of words, strong and courageous. The Lord tells Joshua to have courage. For Joshua to do what the Lord was asking him to do would take courage. God had made Joshua huge promises, and God was going to hold up his end of the deal. But there was definite steps that Joshua was going to have to take as well. And he was to move forward with courage. And that's where we need a fresh start in following Jesus. Here's a definition of courage that I found. Courage is the quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, etc. without fear. Courage is moving into an unknown future without fear. God tells Joshua to move forward with courage. Joshua didn't know what was coming across the Jordan, but God told Joshua he would not fail or abandon him. God called on Joshua to face the unknown, knowing that God was ahead of him. That is the biblical definition of courage. Head into the future, knowing that God is going with you. That you have no need to fear, because God is going with you. Some of us some of us are petrified about the future. I think that if we were, uh, if we were courageous about, uh, about our persona and how people perceive us, there would have been a whole lot more people down in the front this morning because I think more of us, if not all of us, are petrified about our futures. We're so worried about what might happen that we never move past where we are. We don't know what is going to happen to us or to our church We don't know if the bishop and the conference trustees trustees will let us disaffiliate or if they'll demand such a high price that we cannot. We don't know if next year at this time we will still be meeting in these facilities or not. Now, if you weren't scared yet, now you are, right? And some of us are very scared. We lack courage. We did a whole series last summer on Exodus, comparing the Israelites' trek out of Egypt to our own trek. We talked about how the parallels were strikingly clear and how we needed our bishop to let my people go. And as the process has unfolded, we've discovered a lot of uncertainty, and we've become a little afraid. But all the promises the Lord made to Joshua are ours as well. He calls us to move forward. There's victories ahead that he's already promised us. And God will hold up his end of the deal. But there are definite steps that we have to take also. And to move forward, we need that courage. We also need courage in matters of family. Our families need moms and dads and grandparents with courage. 
Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray. But we need parents who will direct their children on the right path. Direct means to have, we have to steer them in that way. And a lot of times, our children don't like to be steered. Amen? Steering may mean we have to move them off of the path they're on and move them on to the right path. And that takes courage to do this. We need moms and dads who will have the courage to stand for Christ and their families. Have you noticed how much our kids act like us? If you use bad language around your kids, you shouldn't be surprised if your kids say the same words. If you act like the devil around your kids, you shouldn't be surprised if your kids do the same. But if you read your Bible and pray and let your kids see you do it, you'll be blessed to find your kids doing the same. We need to have the courage to love Jesus in front of our kids, and not just on Sunday morning. We need courage in the matters of community. Our communities need to see Christians with courage. This doesn't mean that we fight with everyone who disagrees with us. It means that we stand for Jesus whatever the circumstances may be, that we won't compromise to fit in, that we're willing to be talked about and laughed at for standing for Jesus. We need the courage to be a positive influence in our community. We need to be willing to step out of our comfort zones, as Christina just said, without being influenced ourselves. We need to have the courage to live our faith publicly. And we need to have the courage to let people see Jesus in us. That means serving them, loving them, willing to die for them. And we need courage in the matters of church. This church needs people of courage. There's no limit to what we can accomplish here at the Fount. We're here because God wants us here, and he put us here to make a difference in this community, in this state, and in this world. And he's made that clear. That's what he intends. But he needs people who have courage to carry it out. We need courage to move forward. This year will be a pivotal year for us here at the Fount. What our long-term future looks like will most likely be determined by how this year plays out. This could be the year that God births a spiritual awakening in this community. We need to be people of faith and courage to step up to see it happen. We need the courage to step up and assume our places here at the Fount. To accomplish all God has for us, it's going to take everyone stepping up. It's going to take everyone sharing the load. And we need people of courage to make this church all that God intends it to be. I want to close this morning with something I think will perhaps increase your courage. This is the Lord's word to you, and I'm just going to read it. It's Psalm 91. Just close your eyes and listen. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, 
no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. That, my friends, is God's promise to you right now. And he will keep up his end of the deal. My question is, do you have the courage to live your life with these promises as your own? Next week, we'll address a fresh start in mission. And I encourage you to read Matthew 28, 19 and 20 in preparation for next Sunday. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Now let's spend a few moments and reflect on what God may be whispering to our hearts this morning. Please join me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who was with the Father and the Son, is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
seated. Now we're going to move into a season of prayer. Those of you who are joining us online, uh, as we share the joys and concerns of our hearts here at the fount, we're going to in, uh, invite you to begin praying um, and lift up those prayers. If you have a prayer request, go ahead and type them into the comment section, and uh, we'll include them then in our prayers here at the fount. So, uh, what are the joys and concerns of your hearts today?
So God, we're so grateful for the opportunity to come directly to you and to share the concerns of our hearts and the joys of our lives. We thank you, God, that you are working for healing in the lives of so many. We do pray that, God, you would, you would touch those we've mentioned for healing, that you would uh, uh, restore the full function of their bodies and, and bring them back into full strength and health. We pray for those who are traveling and that you would watch over them and keep them safe and bring them home to their families and friends. We pray for those who are wandering in life and not, not knowing which direction to go. We pray that you would shine your light brightly and that they would know it is your light and that they can follow it and trust it and walk into the future that you've laid out before them. We pray for our communities, our neighbors, our friends and our coworkers, our families. We pray that you would touch them with the joy of your salvation and that you would show yourself, reveal yourself through our lives that they would be drawn to you. We pray for the men and women that serve us in police and fire uniform. Pray your protection over them. Pray for elected officials that you would give them wisdom and help them to work together for the good of all. We pray for the men and women that serve us in military uniform and pray that your protection would be with them and that you would bring them home safely too once their mission is complete. And we give you thanks for their willingness to sacrifice on our behalf. So for all these things, we pray with gratitude to you, Lord, and in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray with these, the ecumenical words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to turn in the hymnal, if you have it, or uh, turn your attention to the screens for our Prayer of Confession, it's number 890 in the hymnal, or they will appear on the screen as well. Let us join our hearts together in this prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. All right, it is time for the offering. There is a joy box at the back of the sanctuary in which you can place your physical offerings if you brought them today. If you want to give uh, electronically or send a check, you can follow the instructions on the screen or on the back of your bulletin uh, to, to make those contributions. Now our quartet is going to share, us, share with us musically, and Trevor will tell you all about it. May the Lord bless the gifts, the time, the finances, the work and dedication of the people of his church to the furtherance of his kingdom, to make disciples of all nations. Amen. Amen. As we progress into the month of February, I wanted to spend some time reflecting on music that comes from the black gospel tradition. It is Black History Month, and I am someone that, surprisingly, I love gospel music. 
Uh, I, every single morning, I listen to music on my drive into work that if you guys tried to get up and dance to, you might break a hip. No offense, Dennis. <laughs> And it has been wonderful for my soul to praise the Lord every morning. I have to admit that, and I am proud to admit that. And so I wanted to take a look this month into spirituals and music that comes from, uh, from what is commonly referred to as the black church. Uh, music that we typically may not hear unless we are either listening to the radio or if it's in uh, some movie that we are not, uh, not too familiar with. I'm trying to think of the one person that I can't think of it. So this week, uh, as we talk about courage, I, I kept being brought back to this one, this one hymn, this one spiritual, Give Me Jesus. And I remember uh, there was one, one period of my life in 2018 when I was going through tremendous challenges. Uh, that period happened to coincide with... Uh, the time where I worked for a golf course and I was up every single morning at 3.30. And I would see the sunrise every single day. Uh, whether it was misty in the morning, clear blue skies, I would see the morning. I would see it and I would think of this song every single day. In the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. You can have it all, but give me Jesus. May this song be a blessing to you.
please join us in the doxology number 94, the Alleluia edition. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You sit in majesty upon your throne, high and lofty. You hem your robe. The hem of your robe fills the temple, while six-winged ser seraphs fly around your holy seat, proclaiming your glory. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He called ordinary people to leave their work and to labor for your kingdom. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God now and forever. Amen. I'll invite those who are assisting to come forward at this time.
The table is set. Come, either kneel or stand at the altar rail, or if you want to remain at your seat, then I will come and serve you there. But come, let us receive from the abundance of God. If you need uh, gluten-free communion bread, pick up a, an element as you pass by the this, this stool there on the front.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Use us, even us, now as your disciples. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 374 in your hymnal, or it'll be on the screen, Standing on the Promises. So I'm thinking, stand if you can. <laughs> where the testing ground is going to be. In here it's easy. Standing on the promises of God, really easy in here. But out there, not so easy. But go in peace, and may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ go with you and stand with you always. Amen.